find something in life that can bring that sense of psychological satisfaction, that can do all the things, that can challenge us, that can reward us, that can, you know, frustrate us, that can please us, that can build community, that, you know, we build networks, we build relationships, we build friendships, we express ideas with each other, we express ourselves through our collections, through our social media channels, through our contents, you know, to have all those things wrapped up into this tidy little hobby of sports card collecting. It's something that is easy to take for granted, but it's really special what we have. This card right here, it's the very first stamped serial numbered autograph patch of Michael Jordan. It's the very first one. There's only 23 of them. I like patches that are more simple because in today's day and age, it's hard to know whether a patch has been has been replaced or not. It's a pop two PSA ten, only one Gorgeous year old card. Kaboom, uh, basketball. A lot of people didn't, didn't believe it, didn't like it, you know, and they thought I was crazy for paying what I no. did. Limited logos, LeBron. That's an iconic. There was a point in 2020 when the market dipped pretty heavy, and that's when I was like, I need to go buy something big because like parses prices are down. That's the that's the one I ended up getting. This card I saw in a local card shop had me shooting this one video we were doing. And I said, what, where do you, where would you like me to start? Like in the cases, he's like, well, this case got our high end stuff. Why don't you start here? And then come to this card. I'm like, are you, you have a Kobe credentials rookie? I dreamed of pulling this card. He's like, would you be interested? I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, what if we barter? You mean like I do video for the card? And he's like, yeah, how many videos would you do for the card? And I'm like, uh, pff, you name it. Like I, whatever. I mean, like, I'll, you know, like. I'll put in a ton of work for this. So I did 10 videos. It's a 6.0 and it's complete in box. So the ones that go for crazy money, like a sealed copy of this game that's never been opened is a six figure game or it's, you know, high five figures. It's, it's a big one because as it says right on the label, first appearance of Luigi, first game starring Mario. That's oh, my favorite card. Oh, that's the card. There it is. <laughs> the epitome of of great pitching right here. Clayton Kershaw, Sandy Koufax. Of the gold prisms, if I had to just pick one, I think the 2014 is my favorite. I mean, just the amount of gold Gorgeous. on this card is just really, really nice. 21-22 rainbow in the works. As we pull gold. <laughs> Drazen Petrovic. Here's the Fleer. Almost every card of his ever made. With the hobby, with cards, we're able to actually sit back and enjoy other people's creations, other people's creations, curations of, of these tremendous PCs. There's blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into it, and they're beautiful, and we can sit back and really enjoy it. And as the collector, there's nothing more exciting than having someone else enjoy what you've done. So this basically was in place of the uh, gold card. I got two copies of Vegeta. I've got this Goku and then this Shenron. These were all purchased graded already just because I was late to it, right? Someone else had purchased them from a winner and then graded it. So we found an opportunity to get uh, the first ever Topps Chrome Super Factor of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. This is the first ever Topps Chrome product, the first ever Super. It was in Norway. We went to Oslo. It's a very, very, you know, unique, uh, large deal. And it's a one-on-one, so it's like the shipping, dude, this is gone. If this is ruined, the hobby history will be ruined forever. My eyes are always open, discovering new things, learning new things, dis dis discovering players I want to collect or sets that I want to collect. And as, as that moment comes, every time you have something new introduced to your mind, you have to reassess your collection and say, is this more important than what I, than I, what I have the chance to get? And if you ever have a chance to change something that you don't like as much for something you really like, then, that, then you have a decision to make. And, and that's my collection is the result of, of doing that over and over and over again. For Luca, when uh, I was sitting in a downtown law, a downtown LA law office as a summer associate. And so I'm just on eBay and I just, this card has been calling out to me and I, and I had messaged the guy for this card. It was the Luca rookie prism gold. And so I just sort of added up all my paychecks from the month and a half or so that I'd been there. And I was just like, all right, screw it. So I bought the card from the guy. And so that's how I got the Luca Prism Gold was just having a little too much time as a summer associate in a law office. My logo is actually the, the PMG green color. And this was my PC guy, Penny Hardaway. So this one took a while to get as well, but the Precious Metal Gems green PMG, uh, Penny, PSA 4. This one is pretty sweet. Wow, it's old. Yep, that's Batman issue number four. It's the fourth appearance of the Joker. Uh, it's the first mention of Gotham City. What people regard in the golden age era are 10 cent comics. 
white pages is is big on a golden age book and then this one is my favorite this is the panini one and one the card is cool but the story is cool as well somebody hit us up on instagram all he wanted was a josh allen on card auto rookie card so we spent three weeks traveling to shows looking for these cards taking pictures coordinating a deal with somebody we didn't even know and i found this optic contenders josh allen numbered out of 25 or 35 sealed the deal we got the cards we made the swap these guys are indicative of that giant you know 1999 wave pokemon hits the shores of america and people go crazy over it and you know parents are trying to wait in line at stores to get boxes for their kids especially on the coast where they that was the only place you could get the first edition boxes and those went like you know just disappeared immediately um but all over the country you know there's that american wave we all know about and those big you know 1999 first edition base uh shadow lists and so on charizards that go for six figures but before that there's a rich history for years in japan where the game originated and i just thought that was so cool end of the day and what this show is about is okay you're here now there's going to be a decision everybody's going to make those that have come in lately are you going to stick around are you going to be a part of this community you're going to be a part of you're going to collect and enjoy it or are you going to get scared and leave are you going to dump you know jump ship sell off count you know lick your wounds count your losses and move on you know i want to encourage people to stay because here's why look at all these really great collections that people have procured they took them a long time to get there. Maybe you need to be patient. Don't just buy stuff the minute you see it, thinking it's going to be gone tomorrow. Um, you know, make make good decisions so you're not in a situation where you feel like you have to sell something to buy something, right? So, or you, it hurts too much and you want to get out. I think encouraging people to stay and stick around is going to be the health. That, that's going to be the main the, the foundation of this hobby. Young woman that I met at the national at the women in the hobby booth, mm -hmm. created by Sarah and, and Ty, by the way, was um, Kayla from Kayla Collects. She's Kayla. 19 years old. Yeah, she she knows a ton about baseball. She's a huge race fan and she loves the hobby. She knows her stuff. She wants to do content and she inspires me like to being at that young age and you know having the wherewithal to be like I can go out there, I can put myself out there and be successful with while doing something that I truly enjoy and that she loves sports. I mean, she's the future. I'm excited to see more something happens you got you know you got to get out of your house and it can only fit in your hands it doesn't matter how many you tell me how many what are you taking with you i would probably take my luca black gold my Giannis rpa is my only one left national treasure my favorite item that i don't know if i could i, I love this all-star ball that i have of uh last year of jordan all all-star team so kobe's mvp and jordan's last um last all-star game it was an all-star game bowl on a, on a personal level i just gravitate towards somebody by all accounts who is a good human being does things the right way mm -hmm. puts in the work and is just kind of quiet going about it and so as sports fans we have these thoughts about who's going to be good who's going to be bad why and why well with sports cards you you kind of throw it out there you're showing who you think is going to be good and It'll be a cool feeling in a couple of years when it you know it pays off and i don't mean that in a literal sense because i'm not trying to sell it but like when he becomes an all-star people are going to look back and be like oh you know they were onto something jeremy and courtney knew what was up yeah everybody is trying to find their own niche in the hobby and i think it's being inclusive there are flippers and they're okay they they're trying to make some money out of it. and there is space for that you know but longevity of the hobby we gotta also have some true collectors obviously because it's not good for the hobby to just everyone just want to flip. I grew up in the era, 90s era, where yep. not only the basketball cards are the, the, are the height, but also the Japanese manga uh, were the best, right? I bought it for my son. I bought the whole set individually. It's like a set collecting. Yeah. Certain volume are super hard. Like you have to spend, like, I remember $200 <laughs> on one volume. Right. Because it's it's not a, to be found anywhere and the, the, you have to buy from a certain seller who has a huge price, right? And But right. the condition is super nice. So I, I collect this for my son so uh, he can read it one day. I think I represent a lot of people out there that just would be interested to learn more about it. I mean, I kind of see it through my daughter's eyes. She talks about all the characters and what they do and how they level up and how cool it is. And 
about her. This book talks about every single character from Pokemon, and she just adores it, loves it. I think it's cool because it's a hobby for her, cards like me, so it's exciting. Um, but there's so much to it. I, I think there's the game been shipped, the comp competitiveness that goes with Dragon Ball Z. I mean, that is incredible. Those, those, I mean, those cards you win, I mean, just the chase of trying to go get something that nobody else has. It's so rare. 2020, the first few months are nuclear. We're coming off of Zion. We're coming off of Jason Dominguez. Zion stuff coming out in early 2020 was the biggest thing basketball had ever seen. And Joe Barrow was the biggest rookie to hit the card market. And then COVID hits. And so when COVID hit, like I told my wife, and she'll, like she, to this day, she'll tell the story and laugh. I said, hey, like we're shutting down the country. We're sitting on, and at this point, we're still in my 700 square foot apartment. We've lived there for 12 years, me and her, since we got married. I said, hey, I, I don't know what's going to happen with the card market. Like, I'm, I'm actually nervous. In August, I started shopping around the idea of what if I tried to sell Geo Breaks? And Eddie Mancini, the dude who bought it, like he had been a customer once in a while, calls me out of the blue. It was like, hey, I really want to get into the breaking game. I've got some money. I want to buy the company. With nearly 40 years as the most trusted resource for collectors, dating back to the first Beckett magazine in 1984. Beckett has been the brand that bridges generations of the hobby. We're happy to be partnering with Beckett and look forward to keeping you all updated on the big things happening at the company in 2023. Beckett, it's the name you know and the name you can trust.